Let's lift our hands and worship the most high. Let's exalt his name. Now that I say, Lord, I worship you. I give you the glory, Lord. You are exalted in your awesome majesty. We acknowledge you. We magnify you. We bow before you and honor you. Take all the glory, Father. Take all the glory, Son. Take all the glory, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' most precious name, we give thanks. The only wise God we stand in Jesus' center this morning and we adore and exalt you in the beauty of your holiness and in the greatness of your excellency. We appreciate you for your blessings upon our lives. We worship you for your goodness to us. Thank you, Father, for causing us to stand in good health and worship you. Lord, be lifted up in the name of Jesus. Father, we are on attention to hear you speak to us. Father, speak to us this morning to build us, to give our life direction for this new year. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Jesus' most precious name we pray. Can you be seated? You are blessed. I want to welcome you into the presence of God. I pray that from today, as you come to Jesus' center, you will be seeing Jesus there. In the name of Jesus. By the grace of God, we start a new regime of worship today. The workers come to church 7.30 to 8 to pray. And the service begins by 8. We don't want a strength. We want us to, we want us to use the fresh strength we have to worship God. Sunday is a day of worship. And we want to make it our primary goal. To praise him as we ought to. To seek him in prayers and to listen to him. And I declare as we have started, we will not go back. Amen. I declare the great hand of God shall be upon your life. I cast out of here spirit of dullness. Amen. We shall be sharp children of God, full of grace in the name of Jesus. So note it, service begins by 8. Maybe later for late comers, you can start another one by 11 for them to take care of them. But for those who mean business, on Sabbath day, by 8 we are before God. And 10, 30, 11, we are out of here. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. One of our sisters, Sister Folake Aremu, and all our siblings, they came alive to the fact that their mother died when they were very, very young. Some of them don't even know her way. And they decided they were going to thank God for what God has made out of their life in the last 35 years that the woman passed away. So they're going to do a kind of thanksgiving service to God in Abe Okuta on the 28th of January this year. Praise the Lord. So, and the name of their mother is City Lion, Nora Tu Agbaji. So they are inviting as many as can make it. If you know, you can get to Abe Okuta. So note it in your diary. They are inviting you, and I pray the Lord will give you the grace. I will be there by the grace of God, but you are also invited if you can be there. The Lord bless you. Praise the Lord. Number three, the teenage class of the Sunday school for 2022 did the exam after the end of the year to cross-examine them for what they studied. Praise the Lord. And they found that three of them excel. 
first, second, third position. And just to encourage you to study the Bible, the coordinator have asked me to present the following gift to you. So I'm going to be calling your name. You run to the front with joy to receive your gift. And I decree as you receive it, more grace will rest upon you. You will not run dry. You will be full of God's knowledge. You will live to serve God, to honor him, to fear him, and to live for him. In Jesus' name. So the first person in their exam is Daniel Ajiro Tutu. Can you run quickly? Yeah, it's Daniel Ajiro Tutu. Don't waste our time. Keep clapping for him. I present this to you in the name of Jesus. You will grow in the knowledge of the word of God. And that word will find expression in your life. In Jesus' name. You are blessed. The second position goes to Ori of Eh. Jesus Leia. Yeah, it's Ori of Eh. Hallelujah. Amen. Ori of Eh. Jesus Leia. You will grow in the knowledge of God. And the word of God will find expression in your practical life. In the name of Jesus. Congratulations. You are blessed. The third person is Dominion Ajiro Tutu. 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 What are Dominion? You will grow in the knowledge of God. And the word of God will find expression in your life. In Jesus' name. You are blessed. Put your hands together for them. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm going to be ministering this morning on a message that is titled, Gracefulness and Dominion. Everybody say it. Amen. Do you like the, do you like the backdrop of the author? Can we say it louder now? I pray that as I minister today, the fire of the grace of God will be dropped into your life. There are many of you that have been struggling to follow Jesus. Living apologetic life in faith. Today, that experience shall be wiped off. In the mighty name of Jesus. As the word of God comes to you today, I declare your life shall be altered. Shall be ushered into the realm of the glory of God's grace. In your walk with the Lord. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' most precious name we pray gracefulness and dominion. Gracefulness is from the word grace. And simply to be graceful means you are full of what? Of grace. Loaded with grace. Turn your Bible with me to the book of Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. And I'm going to be reading verse 8 and 9. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and verse 9. The scripture says, for by grace you have been saved through faith. For by grace you have been saved through grace, uh, through faith. And that not of yourself, it is the gift of God. 
Not of works, lest any man should boast. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourself, it is the gift of God. In Christian theology, we call grace unmerited favor. And what is it? Deeper, there is a spontaneous experience of unmerited gift of divine favor under an atmosphere where, where the word of God is preached. I repeat myself. Anytime a platform is created and I'm preaching Jesus to you, or we gathered in God's presence and the word of God is pro progressing, now there is usually an invisible move of God that generates a spontaneous encounter with the gift of unmerited favor that brings salvation. And we explain, and I know the Holy Spirit will give you understanding. You know, you can be 50 years old not knowing the Lord. 40 years, 18 years, but a day comes, you hear the word of God. Some people on the television, some people in a crusade. Now in a church setting like this, you hear God bring preach. His redemptive power, his provision. Suddenly, by the spirit of God, there is surely a touch on a man's spirit. That touch on your spirit opens you up. Awakens your deadness to God. And you come to realize the foolishness of life that is outside God. That's what I'm defining about spontaneous unmerited gift of divine favor in salvation of sinners. To be living wreck life. A composer says, amazing grace. How sweet is sound that saved a wreck like me. Actually, when we were born, the Bible says we were born with a heart that is deceitful and wicked. In our carnal nature, as we set up, in, set up our walk in life without God, we live in carnality, in immorality, in deception, in fullness of sin, in a life that does not promise a good future. That's why you see many of the worldly people, you see, you see them living wreck life. You see people having baby outside marriage. You see people smoking. You see people taking all kinds of gin until they become senseless. You know what drunkenness do for people. It makes you lose your sense. And to them, in that kind of nature, they feel, yes, I am enjoying life. Hallelujah. How many of us, before you are saved, live that kind of life you can remember? You feel, oh, I'm enjoying life. You think that is the best of life you can live. But usually when there is an, a defined organization and only of yourself to a point where you are made to hear the word of God and you submit, usually what orchestrates your submission to Jesus by placing your faith is a quickening by the Spirit. It quickens you. It awakens your deadness in carnality and something you comes alive in search of the living God. The best story that can give you an understanding of it is the story of the prodigal son. He told the father, say, Daddy, I don't think you can coordinate me. I can handle my life. Give me my portion. And he went into far country. The Bible told us in the far country, he started living riotous life. Riotous life. Every life outside Christ live riotous life of crisis that exposes them to terrible infection, terrible disease, terrible experiences. I have a distant cousin who was so intelligent, became a medical doctor, a consultant who specializes in teaching cancer. 
I'm sorry, treating cancer. It caused him. Distant caused him. But he was a chain smoker himself. And he will be recommending to his patient not to do what? Not to smoke. Because there is no capacity to obey the knowledge even that he has himself. So in that wrecked situation, many times when the word of God comes and your eyes are open, your understanding are awakening, then you, there is a switch of our faith in God. And in that switch, what happened is that in an unmerited fashion, the Lord by the blood of Jesus takes us to himself. Amen? And in that position of faith, not of your work now, in that position of faith, in the complete work of the cross, of the sacrifice of Jesus, you receive forgiveness for your sin. And then a kind of peace flow to your heart. Sometimes you can see some people, they'll be shedding tears because there is a strike on their being that says, enough of this evil way, come to me. And they surrender. As they embrace Jesus, the scripture told us in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, at that point, you step into Jesus. He said, if any man be, in who? In Christ. What happened immediately? He becomes a new creature. All things what? Passes away. Behold, all things what? Becomes new. So, that is what in teaching of Christian faith we call positional deliverance from sin. What do I call it, everybody? Position. By position. Because you stand in Christ. Nobody again can hold you for the sin you have committed. Why? The righteousness of Christ is placed upon you. Amen. So by your position of faith in Jesus, you say, I'm born again. I'm redeemed. And people say, you, I know we were in the party yesterday. Sorry, I'm not that person again. I'm a brand new person. That's where you hear that song. I'm a new creation. I'm a brand new man. Hallelujah. Oh, things are passed away. I am born again. Hallelujah. More than a conqueror. Hey, that's what I am. I'm a new creation. I'm a brown new man. Amen. That is what Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 called the gift of God. It's a gift. You can't boast of it. And each of us, at one, I met Jesus in 1982. It was a peculiar Sunday in my life. And the word was coming. I knew I'm not fit. I just have to hand over my life. And I did. And that redefined my life from that point in destiny. I came alive to purpose. The light of God came into my darkness and changed me. Before that time, I was attending a church. We wear white garments. I grew up there with my parents and I had to declare to them, I'm not following you again. Amen. I went all out with Christ with all of my life. Of course, in that condition, I met some people in faith who were not in faith. They were just religious. What did I say they have? They, they go to church. Some of them were born into that living church, but they don't know the God that is living there. Let me say we should go to church. We go and we come back. Why? They have no personal covenant. So, listen today. We are talking about gracefulness. I'm showing you where the work of grace begins. When a man's story does not start from a personal covenant with Jesus, the manifestation and the experience of grace will be difficult. Am I communicating? Because that is the root of the flow of grace of God. In your personal, there must be a day, and today can be your own day. When you say, Jesus, I know you died for me. And I'm placing what? My faith in you. I realize the life I'm living is not the one you created me for. I am switching, and you embrace him. 
And what he will do is simple. He will wipe away those lives you have lived and start afresh with a new beginning. Amen. In redemption of soul, God just don't forgive. God takes away sin. Am I communicating? Is somebody hearing me? God does what? Everybody, he takes it away. And when you're standing in Jesus, it looks as if you have never committed what? Any sin in life. That's the power of his redemption. Why? Because he has given himself a ransom for whatever you have done and you pick up his own life. Amen. What I'm describing first of all for you is the grace of God that brings salvation. Amen. And you must embrace this truth. If you don't know this truth, you cannot bring people to Jesus. Amen. That's why sometimes when you get to people, you say to be saved, don't do this, don't do that. No, it's not don't do. It's to accept the gift. Amen. You present Jesus. And when they accept him, it is inside him now that he teaches them not to do. Amen. Am I communicating? You can't teach a believer not to do. They are living to do anything they want to do with their life. It is in redemption that you grow in that grace to then know how to carry yourself in destiny. May the Lord give understanding. What am I showing you, church and workers, is that people are not saved by their works. They are saved by what? By their faith in Christ. Amen. They are saved by placing their faith in what Jesus did for them. That because you see many people that brag about what they do. Oh, nobody has ever touched my body. That's not salvation. Am I communicating? That is your virtue as a person. That you are living a life that is morally balanced. But that's not salvation. Salvation is that you accept Jesus. Amen. You know you are not fit in your morality. He's the only one that can. And you accept him. You accept his sacrifice. You accept his resurrection message into your life. That's salvation. So don't let mix it up. That's why it's easy for you to appreciate him when he's working out his glory in your life. You'll be able to know if he didn't save me, what would I have been? Amen. May the Lord give you understanding. And as many as need Jesus today, may you find him in the house. In the name of Jesus. So that is grace for your salvation. Now grace for your dominion. Turn with me to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter number 15. And I'm going to be reading from verse 8 to 10. 1 Corinthians 15, 8 to 10. This is Paul the Apostle. When Jesus came to the world, he called 12 people to himself. The name of Paul was not listed. <laughs> Amen. Possibly he was in the law school then. Didn't know the Lord. And so, but when eventually he had an encounter with Jesus on the way to Damascus, and in his work with God, this was his testimony. He said, and last of all, he was seen of me also. He was not supposed to see Jesus because Jesus had died, resurrected, and gone to heaven before Paul came to know the Lord. But by the arrangement of God's grace, Paul was on a mission to be arresting all the disciples and apostles of Christ and stop the preaching. And on the way to Damascus, the almighty God appeared to him and struck him down. He became unconscious. And God told him, you can't kick against the thorn. You will die if you continue. You are not moving further. And there he surrendered. And asked God, what will you have me to do? Praise the Lord. That's his account in the book of Acts of Apostles, chapter 9. What, Lord, what will you have me to do? And God said, now from today, you're going to begin to carry me about. Amen. Amen. And in that surrender, God guided him who he must see, 
who he must and when he, because for that time God made him to go blind he could not see anything and they led him up and down until he met the people God wanted him to meet they lay hand on him his eyes was open and from that point he started preaching the scripture and so he said and last of all he saw Jesus on the way to Damascus who brought him into the into the fold to become an apostle See, I was, last of all, he was seen also of me as of one born out of due time. For I'm the least of the apostles that I'm not meet to be called an apostle because I persecuted what? Everybody? The church of God. He, he elected himself to, be, to walk against the way of God. I see some people criticizing the church, criticizing great men of God. They offer themselves as instruments in the hand of the devil to be attacking the purpose of God. And that was what he was doing. I persecuted the church. He was one of those machinery that were involved in the destruction of the life of Stephen. And that was the time I, I was a persecutor of the church. And verse 10, he said, but by the grace of God, what happened? I am what I am. And his grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain. Amen. So he then testified that by the grace of God a turn around came. By the grace of God I was made. Hallelujah. So the second level I want you to see is that when we are redeemed grace then walk to make us. <laughs> Hallelujah. Number two, grace does what? Make us. By the grace of God, we receive redemption. And number two, by the grace, we are formed. We are packaged. For by the grace of God, I am what I am. Grace framed. That's why you meet some people. You are in secondary school together. It's a notorious person living rugged, terrible life. But now you meet the person, you find a great, godly person. You'll be wondering, ah, is he not this guy? When we were in school, he was giving us trouble. Why? Grace has made him or her. Hallelujah. I declare this year, the grace of God will make you. <laughs> the grace of God will make you. The grace of God will make you. What am I teaching? Now, grace in this second level of conceptual analysis is the work of God in the life of a man. What do I call it, everybody? The work of God in your life that produces the godly being in you. The work of God in your life. I keep repeating myself. Why? Because on the cross, Christ actually poured out his life to generate in you his own life. Amen. Amen. That's why the Bible says, for you know the grace. Everybody say, for you know the grace. He say, you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. And though he was rich, yet he became poor. That you through his poverty may be what? May be rich. So, it is the outpouring of the life of God in you to make you. And then, it, it, that's what turns you to light rather than darkness in the world. That's what you stand among people and they know that you are different. When they saw the disciples, they said, we perceive that these ones are, be, are, are disciples of the Lord. There was no congregation or Meeting anywhere where they decided, let's be calling Christian, Christian. They saw the life people live. They found that they have been made by Jesus. And they saw the nature of Jesus on them. And they started calling them what? Christ follower. Christian means what? Christ follower. Christ fo by their nature, by their conduct, by their steps. Because they have been made by grace. May you be made by grace. In the name of Jesus. What am I trying to show you? Grace in this sense become a divine strength. Thrown or injected into our life as we walk with God. Special grace. 
now in the world, when I see my colleague doing something that's ungodly, I hate it. They love what they are doing. I hate it. Because there is a, a nature that is dropped into you, which is the nature of what? Of God. Amen. And now, if you are left on your own, you can't carry it. It's a gift. It's dropped into your life. That's why many times when you give your life and they lead you into baptism of the Holy Spirit, the nature of God comes into you to make you. Into the fashion that God wants you to be. When you are left alone, you can't be. You can't be. Now, that's in Paul. So, Paul testified that by the grace of God, he was made. Now, let's look at Jesus. Two people that I present under this conceptual understanding of grace, the work of grace in a man. In 2 Corinthians 8, 9, you know the grace. What's the grace of Jesus? For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus. What is that grace? We are talking about the power in Christ. For you know the grace. We are talking about the glory of Christ. We are talking about the authority of Jesus. We are talking about, you know, the, all the beautiful things and dominion of Christ in a person when he was standing on Christ, on the head. In the book, you will understand what I'm saying in the book of Luke chapter 4 verse 14. Luke 4 14. Luke 4 14. The Bible told us there that and Jesus re returned in what? Everybody? In the power of what? Holy Ghost to Galilee. And the news of him went out through all the surrounding regions. So when you say you know the grace, you know his power over demonic forces. Sometimes we say thy sin be forgiven and the demon afflicting the person goes. You know the grace is authority over situation, over the wind, over the weather. He spoke to the bestious wind. Say, peace, be what? Be still and he stopped. You know the grace. The grace refers to what Jesus carried in God. Hallelujah. May you carry something out of God's presence today. In the mighty name of Jesus. All those strange weakness shackling the revelation of God's glory in your life, may they give way to carry his power. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. So the grace of Christ is the power of God in his life. It's the glory of God that he carries. It's the authority of Jesus. That's why he could cast out demons. In the book of Matthew 17, the disciples were struggling with a boy that was brought to them and they were doing the way their master was doing but they couldn't cast out the demons. And the, the, the parent of this particular possessed person came to Christ and brought this person to your disciple. They can't do anything. They couldn't do anything. And Jesus looked at them was disappointed. And he told them, how am I going to be with you? And the Bible says immediately he spoke to that spirit. The spirit left. And the disciples too became worried. Why can't we do it? It appeared there is something you are not showing up. And he told them, if you have faith, if you don't doubt, and if you can fast, if you can wait, you will carry the grace. Amen? And then when he asked them to wait, in the book of Acts of Apostles, you see, when that word became established in their life, in Acts chapter 1, verse 8, he told them they should wait in Jerusalem so that they may receive power. And then the Holy Ghost will come upon them so that they can become physical carrier of the same word, the grace of Jesus. And when they waited, the Bible said in chapter 2 that the Spirit came like a cloven tongue and did what? And rested upon every one of them. As I am ministering today, I declare, may your faith in Christ be promoted to the realm of power. In the name of Jesus. Listen very carefully to me. Every encounter with Jesus that does not produce the power of God is a useless encounter. Because it won't give you the ability to reign in life over anything. Over anything. 
over anything. But this year, Jagba Jagba is out of your life. You will live in power. I say you will live in his power. You will live in his, the fullness of his glory. This year you are going to live in his authority. There's some strange thing happening in the world. When they see you, they will clear for you to pass. That's, that is the nature I'm talking about. When you are redeemed, you must grow to a level where you are a carrier of his power. Amen. Because the day he died, he actually dropped his own life into our life. Amen. You will experience it in the name of Jesus. Let's quickly move out of there. I'm going to section three of this message. And what I want to, how do we then grow in this grace? How do you grow? I'm going to take you to gracefulness. Just follow. How do you grow in grace? How? Two things happen if you want to grow. To begin, when people talk about power of God, when Baba Debo you say, in the name of Jesus, and it's happening, why can't it happen in your life? How do I grow? Number one is information. Everybody say, information. Are you there? Everybody say, information. Hallelujah. Amen. And number two, everybody say, relationship. Amen. Two things. I want to grow in grace. I've given my life to Jesus. I look very feeble. Pastor, you are talking about the power of God in the grace of Christ. I want to have it. You have to grow in grace. And number one, I say information. You must be grounded in the information of the word of God. When you lack correct knowledge, when you don't make effort to acquire the knowledge of the word of God, you cannot get to the level where you share of the fullness of the grace of Christ. For you know the grace. Don't forget that message. You know the grace of Jesus. And that grace, he died to impart it on you. Amen. Under this meeting today, Within the next one month, you are going to confirm that certain weakness have left your life. Yeah. Under this meeting today, you are going to confirm within the next four weeks that certain limitations are permanently broken from your life. Because yeah. I don't believe in emotional testimony. I believe in confirmed testimony. That's why I'm giving you four weeks to know what God is doing as I'm ministering this morning. We have entered into the realm of signs and wonders. And God is going to show you personally that he has visited you in the name of Jesus. Every message people preach to you don't make the right impact until you begin to experience God yourself. Your experience of God cannot be taken from you. If anybody is talking rubbish, you say, well, that's for you, me, I know. Like that person whose eyes was blind. Whatever you say about Jesus, I don't know. All I know is that I used to be blind. <laughs> he touched me, but now I can do what? I can see. Nobody can take your personal experience of Christ from you. When people are teaching theology, they say there are different schools of thought. Somebody you say, God can do this, cannot do this. You say, sorry, well done, theologians. All I know is that he touched me. He changed me. I knew the way I used to live my life before he released me. Today is your day of release. In our prayer, we are talking about settlement. Today is your day of settlement. All the frustrating life you have been living in faith is cleared off today by the anointing. Not by might. Not by power. But by my spirit, share the Lord. Frustrating life is terminated in your life today. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. You begin to enjoy the fullness of his grace. The fullness of his power. The fullness of his love. 
the fullness of his goodness in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. So we grow in grace by desiring the sincere make of the word of what? Of God. That's the information. The most important information in life is the word of God. They have started carrying another information up and down now. Up and down now. And the information that uh, COVID-19 is coming, they say it's another variant. And they are describing in a terrible way that you pack your load from the earth and go to heaven quickly. That is the area of specialization of man to put you under fear. That's why God told us in the beginning, he said, you have not been given what? The spirit of fear. Don't fear their fear. That's what it asks for you. Don't fear their fear. For you have not been given the spirit of fear, but of sound mind. Sound mind. Sound mind. They put the whole world under frustration and terrible confusion. Locked us up. Later to realize that they had it wrong. Now they have started again. So that's why you must be in the secret place of what? The most high. So the knowledge of the word of God, if it's not settled in you, the word will confuse you. What do I say the word will do for you? They will confuse your life. They will turn your life upside down. But when the word of God stands in you, you can stand and say, greater is he. That is what? That is in me. Than he that is where? Than he that is in the world. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Greater is he that is in me than he. Every trouble in the world, greater is the Lord inside you. That's the work of grace. It brings you above. You begin to reign over situations and circumstances in Christ. That's the power of grace. That's why Paul Apostle said, I am what I am. By what? By the... Some people wanted to kill him. They couldn't kill him. They were in a ship. I mean, about to make a sure God said, you are not dying. And they came out alive. Amen. Greater is he that is in me than he. That's what? That, do you believe it? That the one in you is greater? May it find expression in your life. So, inform, what I'm communicating is how to grow in grace. If you hate the word of God, you cannot grow. Actually, as you draw from the word of God as you meditate on the word of God as you study the word of God as it flows into your heart and spirit the power of God begins to increase in you the grace of God begins to increase in you the life of God begins to increase in you and they begin to clear off all the dross of darkness that the devil has dropped into your life sometimes they destroy the seed of sickness that is in your body. Am I communicating? Hello? As you keep consuming the word of God. That was what Kenneth Hagin did on his bed at the age of 17 of blessed memory and documented it. He was on the sick bed, was sick of leukemia. How many of you know what they call leukemia here? It's a kind of blood disease complicated with heart problems. As I'm ministering today, the Lord who heal him, heal you. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. And all he had was to lay hold, because he doesn't have any Bible himself at that time. Had the Bible of the grandmom and was, he said, the more I read the Bible, I was, the more I knew that I shouldn't die the way doctor has decided. They have told them the number of days left for him to live. He said, the more I read the word of God, the more I come to realize that I do not need to die as they have told me. And they walked out of that hospital bed to preach for over 60 years. The work, the work of miracles, gospel of the Lord, gospel of faith to his generation before he died at the age of 86 or so. Amen. Somebody would have died at the age of 17. That's the power. When you are far from the word of God, you are far from the power of God. You are far from the life of God. You are far from the glory of God. You are far from the grace of God. So every morning, that must be your first breakfast, the word of God. Amen. Somebody say, in the name of Jesus, I receive grace to begin to consume the word of God. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Number two, relationship. Don't forget, we are talking about growing. Abby, growing in grace. Relationship is being with God, working with God, living in God. 
Relationship. Relationship. If you don't relate with God, you cannot enjoy the fullness of his glory, the fullness of his power. You can't see. If you are not fond of God, you can't see. And your relationship begins when you begin to relate with fellow brethren. Amen. He said, don't forsake the assembly of the bread. It's not a year when you are slothful. 8 a.m. you get to the church, quarter to 8, you are praying already. Ready for an encounter with God. Hallelujah. Anything that tells you you can if you are going to work, you get to your work before it, if you are a good worker. Isn't that so? Diligent worker, you get them pumped before it, they are their work. Why will they stop you from getting to the presence of God by 8? You wake up and say, I'm going for the Lord. And we want, we want the best of your strength to worship God. That's why we cancel the first session of it and go straight into worshiping God. Dancing before him, giving him the glory, magnifying him because he's God, our rock. Hallelujah. He will be your God. He will be your strength. So relationship with God. Become when you are, if you have relation with somebody, you'll be found of that person. Becoming found of who? Everybody of God. You keep beholding, you sit in his presence, you behold him. There are some days now we decided 14 days we want to seek his face, even introducing fasting and praying. Every day is a relationship. And at your personal level, on a Saturday, you can decide, I'm going to be in the presence of God today. And you sit in your room. That relationship will command your growth in grace, your growth in power, your growth in testimony, your growth in the knowledge of the ways of God. There is a way of man, there is a way of God. It will command your knowledge in, in, in the ways God does things. I've been born again before I entered the university. I graduated and came back for master. And a supervisor told me I won't graduate. Are you with me? My own supervisor told me I will not graduate. I won't finish. Because I have been taught, I've grown in, in my relations with him. I just went to my room, H102. I keep telling you, I can't forget the, my room number in the postgraduate school. H102. And I locked up myself just for 72 hours before the Lord. I went to the ways of God. You under, when you are related to God, you grow in your relationship. I went to the one who owns the universe, who decides who should pass and fail. <laughs> Hello? Is somebody in the church today? There is a God who decides who is to fail and who should what? Who should pass. Daddy, they told me I'm going to fail. What are you saying? My supervisor told me I won't finish. What is your statement? La kutaka, le canto, le garuba, remonde gelege, 72 hours. Some of you can spend 72 hours watching football, but you can't spend 72 hours staying with God alone. I came out into a realm of great success. Amen. The thesis I was writing was a judge and excellent thesis by an external person who never knew me from anywhere when I finished. What I've been doing under him that I was under affliction, within four months I cleared it off by the power of God. There is an enablement in God that makes you to walk with great speed. Oh, may the fullness of the goodness of God be dropped into your life. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. So if you want to grow in grace, what are the things you must do? Number one, everybody. Oh my God. Number one, you must have information of what? Of the word of God. Number two, relationship. Get close. Walk with God. Love him. Fellowship with him. When you drag your food to come to church, something is wrong with your relationship with God. You are happy going because you know it will be better for you. Every corporate meeting is better than every individual meeting. May the Lord give you understanding spirit. Now, so that is the work of grace. You grow. So as you grow in grace, what happens? 
it will get to a time that the fullness of God's grace will be finding expression in your life. That's where we are going to. And so this is a year where God wants you to carry a life, an aura, a glory that we call gracefulness. A level where you are full of what? Of the grace of God. A level where you are full of what, everybody? Of the grace of God that will distinguish you among others. A level where you are full of the grace of God. A level where you are full of the grace of God. A level where you become a model of the grace of God. Model of the grace of God. What the grace of God can do with a life. People see it in you. Amen. Hallelujah. Are you with me, everybody? Second Peter chapter 1. The book of Second Peter chapter 1. And I'm going to read verse 2 to 4 and then 5 to 7. Second Peter chapter 1 and verse 2. Say, grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus Christ our Lord. I can't hear your amen. amen. <laughs> May grace and peace be multiplied on your life. Amen. In the name of Jesus. That was a prayer. And he went and said, according to his divine power, at giving unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that had called us to glory and virtue. The day you are redeemed, you are redeemed to glory and what? Everybody, you receive God's grace for glory, for virtue, not for failure, not for affliction, not for ridicule, not for sickness, not for, the, for glory, for virtue. See, according to his divine power as given unto us all things pertaining unto life and godliness. Now this great gift that pertains to life and godliness I command from God's presence. May it be dropped into your life. Now by the spirit of God I declare supernatural encounter with the grace of God that bring the gift of life and godliness in the name of Jesus. Now receive the life. Receive the nature. Receive the glory. Receive the power in the name of Jesus. Are you receiving it? Your amen shows I agree. I receive it pastor. Can you say I receive it in the name of Jesus? And it will rest on your life. It will find expression in your life in the mighty name of Jesus. So you become a model when you grow. Then you become an expression of the fullness of his grace. That's what God wants you to be. He says, yeah, of God's goodness. Where when people see you, they are seeing Jesus. They are seeing his glory. They see his power. At office, people know this one is untouchable. Amen. Because you are carrying an aura of God's glory of power and of his grace. We shouldn't be people that people can toy with anyhow when we grow in him. We are not supposed to be people that can be manipulated. They say 419, dupe them. It will dupe you because you have no knowledge, no sound mind. You are not growing in the power of God. And he went ahead in verse 4, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promise that by this you might be partakers of divine nature. Of what, everybody? The divine nature. Of the divine nature. Having escaped the corruption that is in the world, true lost. In the grace of God, as you grow, you become partaker of what, everybody? Divine nature. Now, I will explain divine nature to you. Divine nature. That's the nature of God. Am I communicating? It's a nature that breaks every limitation. Things people say we cannot do. When you partake, the grace of God open the door to you to partake of the divine nature, of the nature of God, his creativity, his unlimited manifestation. Now, in that nature, that's the level where you won't say again, I am sick. Am I communicating? 
when you partake of that nature, as you grow in the grace of God, sickness won't be able to rest on your body. Your blood rejects sickness. We reject diseases and all things that afflict people's mental system. Amen. It's, I'm teaching you realities of the grace of God and it will rest on you this year. Yeah, 2023 shall be a great year for you. A year when you come to reality of what you are redeemed for. In the name of Jesus. Divine nature. You will not be afflicted with barrenness again because divine nature is fruitful. Amen. And as I'm communicating, let it be on your bodily system. Anything the enemy has touched in your life, I command, I cast you out in the name of Jesus. Define nature. You carry it by grace, by the covenant of his blood, by the right of your redemption. Define nature. A nature that demons cannot afflict. A nature that sickness cannot penetrate. A nature that failure cannot run on. Amen. That's the nature. That's the nature of God. You cannot hear that God fail. Can you hear that God fail? It's not possible. The nature. So you are redeemed to be a partaker of the nature of God. And this happens as you grow in him. That is what many Christians have dropped that have made them to be living ordinary life. Life without testimony. Life without distinction among the unbelievers in the world. Life that make them live apologetic life. A life of self-pity. The life you are redeemed to is a glorious life, dynamic life, progressing life, reigning life with Christ, a life of dominion. We are going is when you live in the fullness of grace, you stand in dominion. Amen. So the grace produces dominion. Hallelujah. If you accept the doctrine of becoming graceful, you can't experience the dominion of God in life. May the hand of God be great on your life. Let's look at verse 5 through verse 7 of 2 Peter chapter 1. Verse 5 told us, And beside this, giving all diligence, heart to your faith, virtue, and to virtue, knowledge, and to knowledge, temperance, and to temperance, patience, and to patience, godliness, and to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, charity. Praise the Lord. What is this Bible saying? When we grow in grace, you suddenly begin to manifest virtue. Hallelujah. So where a graceful life manifests what? Virtue. Number two, a graceful life manifests knowledge. And that, that's when you can share your faith. When you become graceful, overflowing grace in your life. It, we won't be begging you to preach to your children. We will not be begging you to preach to your neighbor. We won't be begging you to preach to your colleague. We won't be begging you to invite them to come and enjoy the same grace that you are enjoying. It. So you begin to demonstrate knowledge in the steps you take. Number three, self-control. 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 That's a life of discipline. You are able to live within the restriction of the word of God for your life. Grace produces it as we grow in him. You are able to control yourself. You don't let yourself loose. Some people want to give everything that comes to them. They give it to their body. Every dress style that comes, you want to wear it. Even if your pants is showing outside, you don't care. Every food that they bring, you want to eat. That's letting loose yourself. In the advanced world, they say, let him be. You should allow him. If that pleases him, let him do it. Even if you want to burn yourself, they should allow you to burn up yourself. That's the kind of woman right that operates in their life there. And that she's wrecking their life. That's why men are now marrying men. Women are marrying women. Gay, lesbianism, and all kind of evil. Taking over through right what? Right consciousness. Rather than through... God called us to submit to him. To submit to his words. To submit to his purpose. To submit to his principle. To govern our life. So that you can be different in the world. We are going to see many of them wrecked. Many of them are going to die untimely because in the attempt to my women to marry women, they begin to do things that God has never ordained. 
and they are going to reap the fruit of it. They are going to die. There was one that submitted himself to be, to be to the conductor surgery. He said he wanted to convert, you see, from a man to a woman. You can imagine when you take yourself under the laser blade of surgery that they should begin to remove what God has created. They remove your breast, you want to become a man. Or they plant breasts in your chest, you want to become a lady. That is madness of ungodliness. That's why the Bible says when we reject the knowledge of God, he gives us up to a reprobate mind. You may, I'm teaching you this, I don't get there and join them if you travel out of the country. Give them up to a reprobate mind to be doing what is not. What will ruin their life. When people reject God, God gives them up to the devil to do whatever he likes with what? With their life. May the Lord give you understanding. So I'm mentioning what growing in grace produces in a believer. And I've mentioned three. Number one, virtue. Number two, knowledge. Number three, what? Self-control. You must know what you gain before God. Number four, perseverance. Ability to persevere, to stand. Many of us are jelly. You have spent seven years in God. You still want people to be pampering you. You don't want to grow to become anything for God. So many unoccupied vacancy in the fine yard of God. You don't want to occupy anything. You just want to remain a consumer of grace for nothing. Paul said, and the grace that was given to me was not in vain. He carried the grace. So when grace comes, when grace makes you, one, it frames your life to carry the nature of God and prepare you to serve the Lord. Amen. To display the grace by service, by bringing others to him. Perseverance. Perseverance. And could also be seen as patient, being patient, walking with, with, with patience with God. Anytime you pray about anything, you are able to wait on God until it is done. Some people cannot wait for God. They cannot wait on him. They just want fast food, fast food, fast food, fast food. And they invent for themselves problem for which they cry all their life. Perseverance. Actually, the grace of God generates in us inner strength. That's why Paul prayed that you may be strengthened, what? With might by the Spirit of God. Where? In your inner man, in your heart. Have strength to stand. Somebody tell you you are going to say, I'm not going to die. I'm going to live. To do what? To declare the works of the Lord. Where? In the land of the living. The doctor told a woman when he went for an analysis, they look and say, yo, your womb is like this. You can't carry a baby. He said, no. Is that written in the Bible? No. He said, this womb, I'm going to carry a baby. And he carried twins with it. If he had accepted the doctor's verdict, it would be stamped on the womb. But because he's graceful, he rejected it. And the doctor was saying it. He the doctor was speaking by medical scientific knowledge. He was speaking by the knowledge with which everything in the world was created. Which one is, which one is superior? The, the wisdom that creates the science that the doctor studies. Can somebody say, Father, Father? Drop into my life the fire of your grace in the name of Jesus. There is a fire of grace that drives. Number five, godliness. Godliness is Affinity with everything that is God. Affinity with everything that is God. Love for everything that is God. Being found of everything that is God. That simple definition of what? Of godliness. When everything that God loves is what you love, you are a godly person. What you, what you, everything that is God's will is what you command. You are godly. Sin found of God. Anywhere they find you is things that are godly. Things that are noble. Things that glorify God. Then you are a godly person. So as we grow in grace, the out manifestation is seen in our godly outlook. They say that one is not that kind of a person. They can even call you a pastor. Abby, they give you all kinds of nicknames because they, it has been established to them by the observation of your life. 
that you are always tending towards God thing. In everything you do, you don't join the unbeliever to begin to collect bribe. Say, no, I don't want the money. He said, dirty money. To them, it's sweet money. They are working smart. You are working godly. Amen. And number six, kindness. Kindness. You know, opposite of kindness is wickedness. Am I communicating? A kind person is people that consider others. A wicked person is an extremely selfish person that wants anybody to die to get what he wants out of life. Am I communicating? Godly people are supposed to be kind. When we grow in the grace of God, we manifest kindness. Everybody say kindness. When you are self-centered, you can't be kind. You cannot. It's only the spirit of God that makes us kind. And that is an outworking of the grace of God in a believer. When you grow in grace, you begin to manifest kindness. Amen. And finally, love. Amen. Potential to love. You know, you know what we call love in the world? What is love in the world? Love in the world is exploitation of another person. Look at the young girl. They say, I love you, I love you. What are they talking about? It's not real love. It could be sexual love emotional love, something to enjoy, and that's all. That's why you see somebody carrying the girlfriend after using the girlfriend, then use the girl for ritual. It's not love. Just looking for somebody to do what? Hello, to do what? Hello, to do what? And this strange, terrible, worldly love is expressed outside marriage. When you are not married to somebody and is asking you for sex as a girl, what is happening? Is asking for exploitation. Is it love? Hello? You can't answer me. Is that love? It's exploitation. Because there is no license for what he's demanding for. There is no right for it. It's exploitation. And if you don't like yourself, give yourself and let them keep exploiting you. Then we see the number of people who exploit you. And whatever they drop in your life, you carry it all your life. Praise the Lord. Is the way of death. That's why the Bible says to be carnally minded is death. To be spiritually minded is life ever. Permanent life. Permanent life. Life from here, life above. Amen. I repeat myself. To be carnally minded is what? Is death. And to be spiritually minded is what? Is life. Is peace. Amen. So I've mentioned how many things that Growing in grace we produce. How many of them? Seven. Seven. Number one, virtue. Number two, knowledge. Number three, self-control. Number four, perseverance. Number five, godliness. Number six, kindness. Number seven, love. I declare this commanded on your life. May you become carrier of godly virtue. In the name of Jesus. May the Lord establish you in the knowledge of his truth. In the name of Jesus. Now by the power of the Holy Spirit, may you give self-control over your life. In the mighty name of Jesus, I receive strength for you in your inner man to persevere until you break through into what God has ordained for you. In the name of Jesus. You know the Israelites cannot persevere. Quick, 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 quick thing. And they work 40 years for a 40 days assignment. 40 years. I decree affliction will not be multiplied in your life. I bear my two more years. 40 years for what? For 40 days assignments. Because they can't persevere. They can't take a stand of faith. And I declare you will live godly life. That will be evident to everybody around your life. In the mighty name of Jesus. May the spirit of kindness that comes from the Holy Spirit rest upon you today. May you receive potential to love. Through love that not just others. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Now, in rounding up this message, what are the work of grace? What work does of grace in our life? The work of grace. Number one. 
Grace compels wondrous things to happen in our life. What do I say grace draws everybody? It compels the miraculous. When a man grows in grace, you begin to experience the miraculous in all that you do. The grace of God, when we submit to God's grace, and we follow him, and we grow in it, automatic, that's why he said these signs we follow. Hello, are you with me? What we follow them, this sign we follow. Every scripture proved that. And the book of Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, it says, seek first the kingdom. And what will happen? All this, every miracle follows. Physical blessing, spiritual blessing. When a man submits to the grace of God and grows in it, that grace will compel wonders to begin to happen. It compels wondrous things to happen in our lives. Wonders are far from people who cannot submit to God's grace. And they live toiling, 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 laboring, sweating out of life. But when you submit to the grace of God like a baby, wonders begin. I declare open heaven for revelation of God's wonder in your life. I can't hear your amen. I repeat that prayer for you because I'm ministering. I want to see next week that grace showing in your life. I declare today that the grace of God on your life begin to compel wonders of God. In the name of Jesus. At your office, sudden promotion. Sudden selection. For things that will bring blessing to your life. That's wonders. Sudden exemption from calamity. In the name of Jesus. Grace compels wondrous things to happen in our life. Why? Because when our life is loaded with grace of God, it attracts the move of God. When your life is loaded with God's grace, it attracts the move of God. I've told you the load, virtue, seven, habit. Mm -hmm. When you load your life and you are walking in them, it will be attracting the move of God. It will be bringing blessings your way. It will be commanding the miraculous. May the Lord lift you to that realm. In the name of Jesus. Grace, when I say wondrous thing, it breaks every heart. Heart. O double D S. Every heart that people experience in life, it breaks them. Wondrous thing. Grace compared breakage of every heart, every limitation, every hardship that people are going through on the heart. You are exempted. Because you are walking in grace. Amen. Number two. Number two. Grace enable you to deal with anything that comes your way. Because grace itself is the power of God in you. It enables you. I'm talking about the walking of grace. The work of grace in your life now. It enables you to deal with anything that comes your way. Around you. Even when you fail a call. Something tells you. When I'm going to do it again, I'm going to get the best grace in the class. It helps you. You don't give up. Carry out grace. Don't give up until they win in every battle. Amen. It gives you strength to deal with everything. Look at Jesus. Jesus. In the book of John 14, verse 30, he said, the prince of this world came to me and he had nothing. He was able to deal with all the tricks of the devil. See, I will no longer talk much with you. For the prince of this world did what? Everybody, come in. And did what? Testimony of Christ. And what? Everybody had what? Nothing. No success in the life of Christ. That's grace. Full grace of God in his life. The devil didn't say, because it's Jesus, don't let me tempt him. He tempted him, but he failed. The devil failed. Woefully. Couldn't achieve any success. Try Christ to achieve nothing. Praise the Lord. So you have been raising grace to be able to deal with anything that comes. Stop being afraid. Some people say, ah, something happened. Deal with it. Deal with it. You know, we behave foolishly in the public world. Recently, there was a story that some students were jumping first and people were committing and they've never had it. As soon as 
as time in memorial there has been secondary school. In your secondary school, are there no students that were jumping fence? Hey, damn it, long. In this secondary school, you can jump fence. They don't talk as if they are not in the world. People begin to talk. Or maybe the principal should become God to be surveying the fence of the school. You know, sometimes people, because of, you know, the social media, we amplify things. And foolishness, you won't think deep. Maybe some of the writers themselves are part of those jumping fence then. I'm telling you the reality of life. They will forget their madness. You know, sometimes when you are beating your child, you don't remember that you are, you need to believe foolishly like that child before. Abby, I told, I used to tell parents, I said, madness to so normal yet. Have you not demonstrated it before? But we behave like angels. You have never failed. Abby? It's the only ghost that makes us come to reality and have correct understanding of things. Human beings, we just magnify nothing and begin to chase nothing, chasing wind. But people who are sound minds, they can what kill are you one way by? What is the noise? I know boys in my school who are smoking hemp as far back as that, 1976 to 1981. How many of you have been born in 1976? So, is, why is he in news now? They will smoke hemp, they will drink ogogoro, and when they see them like this in class, you just avoid them because they can do any damage to any life. Because when you are in the hand of the devil, he can use you to do anything that is evil. That's why knowing Christ is a blessing. May you know him truly. In the name of Jesus. Is somebody listening to the Lord today? So there is a grace in God that makes you to be able to deal with situations. Your Jesus dealt with the devil and gave a testimony that he came to me, oh, he had nothing. He told him to look at the word. He said, come on, you can't show me the word. I created it. He told him to turn stone to bread. He said, sorry, if I need food, I don't need stone to turn to bread. Ravens are there that can bring food to me. The power of God, you know, there are some of us Christians who want to show power of God like something to brag. God doesn't give power to brag. God releases his power to solve problem. When there is no problem, say, let me show you. I'm a child of God, will disappoint you. Because his power is not that cheap for a show. Or to, 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 to enhance your own selfish uh, uh, glory. May the Lord give understanding. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And in Philippians chapter 4 verse 13. Paul Apostle said, I can do what? I can do what? I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. There are many ministers in this church when they hold microphone, they say, oh, I wish we can just give this church to this person. You see fire. You see rupture of grace that we are just keeping in one corner. There are so many things in you by his grace that you have to recognize. Am I communicating? Paul record, he said, I can do what? All things. I can pass. If I call you now, come and pass to come and preach next Sunday. Some people say, hey, pastor, I can't preach. Oh, we running away. Instead of recognizing, I can do all things. Mary said, let it be unto me. According to what the Lord has what? Has said. Is somebody here today? Can you say, I can do all things through, through Christ who strengthens me. From today, I begin to do all things in Christ. I shall not fail again. I'm not going to fall. In the name of Jesus, I mount up with wings like the eagles in the hand of the Lord through the help of the Holy Ghost I mount up somebody say it I mount up with wings like the eagles in the hand of the Lord through the help of the Holy Spirit I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me for greater is he. Somebody say it loud and clear. For greater is he. That is in me. Than he. That is in the world. Hallelujah. Amen. 
So number three, grace turns you to a person that cannot be ignored. When you carry God's grace, you can't be ignored. Anybody who ignore you will be losing something. Imagine if you carry power to heal the sick and they ignore you. Who loses? They will keep swallowing their antibiotics forever. Grace turns you to somebody that cannot be ignored. Am I so like grace, please. Like growing grace. When the grace of God is fully set you and you become graceful, everything they will say, come and say something. I am in one powerful council meeting and the chairman said, Pastor, you have not said anything. You must talk on this matter. They want to hear the wisdom of God. It's grace. You can't be ignored. Even when you refuse to say, they will say, you must say something. You must talk. Because they know you are carrying something. Everybody say, from today, I am carrying the fullness of God's wisdom in my life. Are you there? Are you serious? Do you understand what I'm doing with you today? I'm leading you on the path of power. And you will not miss it. In the name, can you say, I'm carrying the wisdom of God in my life. I'm carrying the nature of Christ. I'm carrying his power. And it shall manifest as a great light to people in my generation. I'm not going to die unnoticed in the name of Jesus. Amen! You are a great being in the hand of God. Recognize it. Because it's very important for you to know. Some of you are just carrying the things being inside. Just sleeping. It must come alive now. Amen. Amen. This year I say it must come alive. Amen. I must become who God created me to be. In this year. No fear again. In the name of Jesus. So don't forget number three. You naturally become a person that cannot be what? That cannot be ignored. You won't look for husband before they come. Somebody say amen to that. You won't begin to cry and fast before you know who to marry. It's a grace. It's not a grace when you have to be doing all kinds of marathon fasting to know who to marry. That's a graceless life. A graceful life is a life ordered by God's power. Amen. And that becomes your portion from now. Everybody say, that is my portion. From now, before I realize that I need something, heaven will provide it. Amen. It's been that. That's God for you. Before Adam knew he needed a wife, what did God do? He provided one. That's fullness of grace. Can someone say, I tap into that grace. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Number four. Grace brings you into dominion. Everybody say dominion. Ah, 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 ah. Everybody say dominion. It is the grace of God that brings us into dominion. When you see me radiating, dynamic, standing, some people will ask me, I've seen about two vice chancellors ask me, where do you get this? I say, I sleep the way you sleep too. You become supernatural. That's why the Bible says people that are born of the Spirit say they are like winds. What are they, somebody? They are like winds. You say you can't determine where they are coming from and where they are going. They are just supernatural. Somebody say, I am supernatural because I carry Jesus in me. I carry the Holy Ghost. Are you there? You are not ready for me. Oh. Can you say, I am a supernatural being because I carry Christ in me. I carry the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah! Are you excited you carry the Holy Ghost? Amen! You can see the guy say, I walk, Abby, walk in dominion, walk into the purpose of God. It's carrier of Holy Ghost that can do that. Amen! So grace brings you into dominion. You'll be gallant. People are afraid you are never afraid of anything. Just look at them because the Bible says you should not fear they are fear. Amen. Amen. As for you, I have a purpose for your life. You know it. Ah, we you say, sorry. For me, I am living a kingdom under a kingdom. Am I communicating? 
He told you before, he said, though you are in the world, you are not what? You are not of them. So whatever is happening to them is not your portion. Anytime you are thinking what happened to him, will happen to you. You have lost your sense of faith. Am I communicating? You are not of the world. You are, not, you are different. Everyone say, I am different. And so this year is a year of gracefulness. I will manifest grace. I will display grace. Rise up and say, I will display grace. Amen. Amen. The message is over. Can you say, I will display grace. Amen. And so it shall be for you. In the name of Jesus. And do you know that there is nowhere you are that grace cannot find you. There is no end of the road in grace. That's number five, walk of grace. No end of the road in grace. No end of the road. They say, I, I don't know what to do again. I don't think God can. There is no end of the road in grace. End or take grace, find the expression, you are lifted. Amen. I stopped there this morning. Lift up your right hand. I say, I connect the fullness of God's grace in my life. I stop walking as object of pity on the street of Nigeria in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now look at my face. Listen. The black people have been made to always think they are object of pity. They go to people there and say they are begging for money. They never know that with God I can live within what God has created in my economy and become great. That's why even when they are rich, they will be borrowing. It's a mentality that you must break. It's a mentality peculiar to the black. When do you see the white men coming here to borrow from you? They don't come. You want to go. You can't do anything on your own. Dependence syndrome. You are going to pray today. If there is any, any, any cause that have been decided to make me dependent in life, to carry mentality for debt, for miserable life, today I dispose you of. By the blood of the covenant, I break every covering of cause of dependency in my life. Ah, is this what you bring out of this message of gracefulness? I break every curse of dependency over my life. Though I am an African, I connect the grace of God, the fullness of God's grace for glory, for dominion, for authority to reign in life. I shall not be an object of pity. Are you running? You are fighting for your destiny. I shall not live as an object of pity. I shall become an object of envy in my generation by the grace of God that bringeth salvation. I prevail in life. I live a life of glory. I walk in power. Frustration is phased out of my life. Oh, are you praying? Frustration is phased out of my life. I exercise dominion today over every limitation that has kept me down. I receive dominion over you. By the covenant of the blood, I receive my victory. Re Kaili Mataka. The hand of the Lord rests on you for excellence. La Karia Masanda Laba. Re Kalabarabalagabarabalagabababa. Ro Kelibakuria Malabababa. Ro Kalia Mariba. Re Keleboria. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Can you lift up your right hand and say, I receive increased strength in the Lord from today to begin to do things that are supernatural in the name of Jesus. I walk out of disease 
and sicknesses. I live in the nature of the Lord who died for me in the name of Jesus. I live the resurrection life in the name of Jesus. I live the resurrection life. I carry the nature of God in my bodiless system in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. You are blessed in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Your life shall be full of joy, shall be full of peace, shall be full of God's blessing. You walk in dominion for a glory to the name of the Lord. God puts you in charge this year in the name of Jesus. It is well with you. Go and win gracefully in the name of Jesus.